so I'm, I'm Fatos Deguti. I'm the technical director of 3T Additive Manufacturing. So I shall go through the introduction of uh, 3T as a company, then what uh, process um, and the powder controls we have put in place to ensure product um, um, sort of, uh, development and, and also um, conformity. Conformance, rather, sorry. Uh, metrology capability, uh, 718 as production readiness uh, to show how uh, what we can what can be achieved in a production uh, environment. Then, how do we future proof these um, alloys with, with this constant pushing of limits of how do we change new materials and constantly making sure that we are um, at, the, at the cusp of it all? Um, so, we, we introduce the next, uh, or it should be Inconel 718, terribly sorry, there is no such thing as Inconel 178. And then we'll go through materials readiness level or the MRL process as opposed to TRL process that we um, sort of graduate these materials as we develop them at 3T. Uh, next slide, please, Pamela. And straight on to the next. So 3T established uh, in 1999, um, and it was a mixture of injection molding, uh, CNC machining, and some other sort of uh, stereolithography and, and, and some um, SLS. Um, it then moved on to, in 2007, it got bought over by essentially uh, LHUM, or you know, Hans Langer's sort of, um, empire, uh, the man who owns also the EOS machine. So, we, at that point, we introduced the metal additive manufacturing, and in 2014, we implemented 13485 and 9100, so we can do medical devices and um, aerospace parts. In 2016, uh, myself and a couple of other guys, we brought in all the furnaces that we could do heat treatment internally. In 2018, um, extra EOS machines. 2019, 100% owned by Langer family at that point, when our last uh, the last of Mohicans, um, our, our CEO at that point, uh, was was essentially bought out. Um, so now we are owned by by the Langer family. And finally, um, in 2020, we just split into polymers and metals. Uh, so uh, we, as metal side, we aim we 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 keep now the 3T additive manufacturing name, and um, the polymers side has become 3T AMP, P standing for polymers additive manufacturing polymers. Uh, we figured there was no point to add another M. Um, yeah, please, next slide. So you can see that um, as, as the slide was showing, uh, constantly we have been yearning to go towards the um, value chain, internally integrate the value chain uh, for some sensitive customers, but also more importantly for the, the, the time um, uh, saving that can be afforded by having everything internally. Um, so we have invested heavily. Of course, we do design consultancy, as, as most of us um, sort of service bureaus do. But we have powder management. Everything I will show in, in a bit how we we control all the powders. Um, the all of the support structures and everything are set up by us. Um, the build process control, heat treatment, EDM slash band. So all of that is internally, so we can profile EDM to very high accuracy. And we have two um, th five-axis machines and a one three-axis machine, uh, we, and we are able to uh, quite skilled uh, machinists from the F1 background, and they can do um, sort of work from billet, but also from casting and and and, and formed parts, which is a lot more difficult. Um, and we have um, extensive hand finishing capability. Um, a lot of these works uh, need to be hand finished, um, as 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 Robin at some point used to call it, the the, the dirty, a, a additive manufacturing dirt little secrets. This is the important bit where actually a product becomes, um, a, well, sorry, a, a part becomes a product um, from AM up until really the finishing. You don't really know how how good the part is. And finally, of course, the inspection. We're heavily um, invested in, 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 in getting all the inspection in-house. So we've got two loose light scanners, one CMM, and extensive um, inspection team and quality processes. Next slide, please, Pamela. Link straight on to the next. So um, from this is, it's quite a heavy slide trying to depict everything that we do internally. So we have got, of course, the, the lab, which is what we call the front end of, of, of the business. So that is the whole project management, product development, slash research and development and applications engineers, which is what I really head up. So that's the, uh, that's the technical side of it, getting it ready, uh, make, building the parts and then making them 
fit to go into the hand finishing and post processing because if you don't have them split like that, it's very, very difficult to to make sure that it's time for a rebuild or you just add a lot more value and lose your lead time by sending essentially a bad part into the hand finishing and post processing of the MLS. So, of course, we do have new production, product introduction uh, process, MPI, and that is important for, for the aerospace and motorsport um, and automotive, really. So it is very, very important. That's the, 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 the level of, 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 sort of um, scrutiny that we need to apply to some of the products um, is quite high. Go to the next slide, please, Pamela. Yeah, so... We probably, I've been told initially that I, I was overkilling the process by making sure that every single powder that comes into um, 3T uh, gets checked. Um, so the goods in, at goods in, a vial of powder is taken out and then um, you do the whole flow of parent density morphology. Um, and then of course, in parallel to all this, while all this is happening, short build, um, then scaling porosity and tensile after heat treatment, not as built. And then we decide whether all of those are aligned to what we expect um, the material to behave. Um, and then we decide whether it's released or not. This is done also from EOS, but for EOS powders, which come in with their certificate as well, because we need to make sure that we see everything um, uh, in, in, in incoming, make sure that um, we are not having any issues later on in production. And in process, of course, um, powder gets received and then also is done the in words, which is that top goods in uh, tests uh, of during build and sift processing, there is always a life cycle control where we control um, some of the tests um, in every every so many recycles, depending on the material. And more importantly, we have monthly calibrations, we, which we also place uh, tensile, properties, uh, tensile samples on that. We go on to the next slide. So this this is just a suite of material of, of of test pieces that we have to uh, aid us with powder and process control. So SEM, master size, uh, density, Archimedean density device, uh, optical microscope, um, tensile test, and a whole flow meter. Of course, there are a lot of fancier things that the chaps at MTC have, but uh, a we can't afford them, and b they take a bit longer to test, and we just we know now the correlation of this suite of tests and what those values will lead towards uh, a working powder. So that's what we have stuck to. Go to the next slide, please, Yes, yeah, so like I said, build and machine control, of course, on top of the powder um, control that is the material coming in. Um, now we need to also, uh, make sure that um, the power and the machine, um, power checks are done quite often, and we need to make sure that the laser is not drifting in terms of power. We also Every month we have calibration for machine. Um, um, we run uh, tensile specimens and these star shaped um, essentially uh, specimens, they show whether you have issues with what is called known as sky writing, i.e. whether the laser is drifting and it's not really hitting all the way to the contour and you're creating what is known as necklace porosity all the way around. So if there are any issues with that, we phone up the maintenance guys and then they come back in and reset that. Um, so we have to do that all the time to make sure that we are conforming to some of the high profiles of um, aerospace customers. Um, and because of us needing to conform to their specs, then all the other guys uh, get that for free because the machines run perfectly. Next slide, please, Pamela. Yeah, straight on. So. Personnel and equipment of metrology. This is very important. Um, we try to do this as many times as we can during product development. So, although once we've locked the process down, inspection happens at the end. When we are product pro developing a product, or we have really quite stringent material, um, um, a product quite quite a difficult one, where there is a lot of um, sort of outsourcing us needing to outsource into either spillover capacity um, issues if we're facing with that or we have completely a new accreditations that we, we don't have and we need to send to subcontractors we need to constantly check in and check out every time we um, send the parts so we really have a suite of, of very important uh, and useful um, sets of, uh, of, of measurement devices here 
of course, with us having done so much on the on the F1 and motorsport, we have to have a, a um, magnum mic um, or a magnetic uh, sort of wall thickness measurement as well as an ultrasonic one. And then the CMM is sort of the industry standard. Then blue light scanner is really when it tells you that some very finicky parts that you can't CMM straight away, you are looking at overall scanning or any issues. Um, so it's it's really quite good. Um, we have very compatible with each other. So these technologies are quite compatible and we are able to look at everything from global to very, very highly precise local sort of uh, dimensions required. So yeah, on the next please. So again, so DMLS of Inconel. So this is a sort of um, us having been so um, with our background and where we are placed, we do a lot of um, F1 work. And in this case, the 718, uh, we wrote a, a white paper last year. So for over six years, we have been working with, with 718 um, thin wall components. I think you guys would really quite easily figure out what those parts are. Um, so although, although they, these are seasonal parts, all right, every season you're going to have different uh, sort of um, slightly different dimensions they're the same family of parts and so we have been able to amass knowledge and constantly build up and uh, next season has always been a lot easy, easier to, to 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 get the order on time to budget and really with low copq rate and we have done that by just putting the right process process controls in place and constantly we were monitoring every every single build had three tensile bars um which are not, by the way, your standard round specimens, which tell you that you know it's an amazing material. You're actually most of the times are not going to machine, so you're not going to have that kind of thickness or that kind of surface on the on the part themselves. So we always use these flat ASTM specimens with unfinished, unmachined uh, faces on along the gauge length. So we're looking at essentially. It's quite quite a mix: different uh, geometries, different supports, different parts, different machines, different powders different powder source and different life points in of those powders. So all of those, um, uh, we, we also tested the fact that we brought all in between, during that period, we brought the uh, heat treatment internally. So we tested external versus internal. And if you take me to the next slide, please, Pamela. And all of those different changes, all of those things um, fail, fell in this uh, sort of, um, you know, spread which is um, within EOS uh, data sheet. But more importantly, we, you know, it, it's shown that if you do your house work very well um, and your housekeeping uh, very well, um, then you can actually, all of those things, machine to machine variability and all those things then become less of a problem because clearly, you know, the, the, the product conformance is is being driven by something else, which is the consistency of what you what you're looking after, and 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 the product, and how you put the controls in place to um, make sure that um, between machines you don't have any issues. If we go on to the next slide, and for those who are really hot on the old um, mini tab there. we achieved a, a CPK value of 1.92. Again, the six sigma. Fiends will, will appreciate the fact that a process, you have a stable a stable process of anything that is 1.33 or higher. So I think we, we can quite safely say that we've got enough historical data and uh, driving this to say that actually, you know, we can do Inconel 718 pretty well at 3T. So, yeah, we can go on to the next slide if we can. So, of course, um, how do we push this? Um, well, so one eight is obviously it's an old um, oldish alloy, and constantly we've been asked, "Oh, can you do CM two four seven? Can you do this? Can you do that?" And and ultimately, you can't do it unless you are doing all of the other mixes, the the, the chemistry changes, and everything else. And we're not really set up for that. On top of that, uh, we did try to do it, and as the world and his wife tried to do it, and you can essentially get one part, then the moment you change the orientation of that part or the or the uh, height, then suddenly you're going to lose a lot of data. So yeah, so we are just working on trying to make sure that uh, we we are future proofing ourselves with something that de deposits properly. So this is ABD 900, it's gamma prime, um, although it's not as blocky as 247, it is a bit rounder, so it allows a lot more, uh, uh, it, it can take on a lot more um, uh, stresses and therefore fewer cracks. If you go on to the next uh, slide. 
um, yeah, so downskin, all of that kind of stuff that we tend to do. And next slide. Oops. So, um, of course, since uh, 718 is 600 degrees for operating temperature, ABD 900, as the name suggests, is 900 degrees, and we are getting really good results at room temp and high temp. It will get even better results. So, we are quite happy with this um, that we have got a product, product which we can slowly release into the market. So, if you want the next slide. So materials gateway to applications, um, we have what is known as MRL process material readiness level. Had I known that Martin McMahon is here, I would have put A20X here as well. So we have developed that as well um, in, in, in a similar way, but that is a lot higher so for MRL. So we use exactly the same TRL 1 to 9. Even if we've got brand new material that comes in from EOS, we don't put it straight to TRL 9 because we need to generate our data. So we put it onto TRL 7 or MRL 7, then we get generate data. So we only got one material that is TRL 9 which is in Conal 718 because we've got 2,500 data. The others go behind with about 500 to 800 data points. Um, so we we constantly look at this and only do we make sure that it can be gated onto the next process by having looked at surface quality, um, support transitions, structures, and geometrical capabilities. So if we go into the left slide, I think it should be the final one. So going back to how do we develop? Uh, well, development of material parameters set should be considered complete only at the end of the value chain. So you can't just heat treat without heat treatment say, oh, I've, I've developed the material, not, not possible. Depending on the application and material, different levels of effort are required at different type of stages. So, uh, you know, so we may see actually heat treatment might be very difficult. Um, so you don't really know how much you're going to spend on that. So always make sure that you start all of the MRLs at the same time to see where you really need to home in, what's really in this ugly head as you develop material, because you might have to see the, 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 the subtle differences in chemistry we can't pick up straight away. And ultimately, the proof is in the performance of the product, which is decided by the interested party and just trying to echo Mota's statement there about, you know, essentially, even if there are some cracks, who cares if the customer is quite happy and is performing to what you needed to perform to. I think at that point, I'll say you, to you guys, thank you.